In this video, we are gonna go over how to launch a dynamic dispatch VI asynchronously. If you're not familiar with how to launch VIs asynchronously in LabVIEW, if you go to LabVIEW and look under help, find examples, they have a couple of really good ones. We'll just search for async. There we go. And there's a couple different options for it. There's a call and collect, which means you call it and then you wait for it at a different point in your execution for the results of the VI. But for this today's example, we're gonna be going over call and forget. And the call and forget is an interesting way of doing it. And basically what this says is that it wants to go and start a VI asynchronously. And then as soon as the VI launches, uh, continue executing on the wire. This is useful if you, if you write like an instrument monitor or you have some other sort of uh, helper VI that you want to have running in parallel to your main application. So if you look inside of it, the example is pretty simple. It's pretty esoteric, but it's pretty simple. And what it's doing is it's opening the VI and then launching it or configuring it for call and forget and then launching it with a set of default values. This is a, if you wanted to change this out and you use just the basic one, you can copy paste this into another VI and then you would just uh, select the VI you want on top of these three areas, and then you could use that to launch a VI asynchronously. One of the problems with this example is it doesn't work with dynamic dispatched uh, VIs. I don't know why, after all these years, Levy hasn't fixed it, but you cannot call a dynamic dispatch VI directly uh, using these asynchronous start methods. Instead, what you have to do is you have to wrap it. And so this is, if you've seen some of my other videos, this is just the basic framework for an instrument uh, HAL. And I've added a couple things to it. One is I've added a start soft panel async method. And then I've also put a soft panel wrapper. So if we open up the soft panel async method, what it does is you'll notice this looks very similar to what you saw in that example. We just copied and pasted it out. We change these uh, three areas to uh, call the soft panel wrapper VI. And then we plumb in the uh, our, our wire on top of here. A few things to note when you, when you write one of these is that you do have to change the execution. And shared clone pre-entry or execution is probably best. It does make debugging a little bit more interesting, but you can if you do non-reentrant execution and you call this multiple places, then you, you'll have a blocking issue. And that's not always uh, obvious what's going on. Save that. And then for sure in the soft panel wrapper, this one has to be, again, a shared clone re-entrant execution. I prefer when, I, when I'm doing re-entrancy to have pre-allocated clone re-entrance, but for dynamic dispatched VIs like this, LabVIEW forces you to do a shared clone re-entrant execution. And then what this VI does is it has a static terminals coming in on top of the base class, which is this is a, just a JME test solutions instrument. And then inside the static uh, dispatch VI, we just call the soft panel in this case. And this, this soft panel has dynamic dispatches. It's kind of dumb in my opinion, but that's the way it works. And once you have that wrapper VI and something that will call that wrapper VI, then you can now launch uh, v dynamic dispatch VIs asynchronously. So let me show you how this works. So let's go to launch soft panel. And I've added a little button to demonstrate if it's asynchronous or not. And in my original demo, what we did, come on, is this was equivalent to asynchronous is equal to false, which is we're just calling the soft panel. And depending on what we loaded up, that soft panel would be launched. But the problem with doing this, and we'll demonstrate it, is that if you just do that, the whole interface will hang until you're done. So we'll load our instrument, we'll do launch, you can now do things with your instrument, but if you come over here, this is completely locked up until you're done with this instrument. Now, if we wanna do asynchronous instruments, we'll click the asynchronous button. It is now running the uh, start soft panel, 
asynchronous VI. And then when I press launch, I get my default soft panel. And then if I want to launch another one, I can launch another one and another one and so on and so forth. And this is extremely useful if you're running an instrument how where you've got seven or eight instruments and you may need to have multiple of them up to debug a particular issue. You can bring them up and watch what's going on with the instruments. Now, word of warning though is, is that since we've effectively forked the wire here, the class internal data is not being uh, updated from the other rest of the application. So these are kind of standalone. If you have an instrument handle, they can look. If you if you have a uh, if you send commands to an instrument, you can change the state. So you want to be aware and careful of that. Typically, this is one of the reasons and an appropriate use case for the DVRs. I have another video that explains how to use those. And that way, if you use a DVR for some of your private data, then you can have your soft panel manipulating it and your program manipulating it at the same time. In normal production use cases, you should never be using these or having technicians or operating operators using soft panels during a four credit production uh, test. But when you're debugging or if you've got something that, that's going wrong, then these are very useful to at least monitor what, what's going on. So, and that is how you run or start dynamic dispatch VIs asynchronously.